What's up, guys? It's Moncho back with another session of Get Schooled. Are you ready for today's pop quiz? Okay, here we go. Name one business benefit of fixed mobile convergence. Is it A, customer retention, B, it's all about networks and connections, or C, increases the number of subscribers to your mo blog? M mo blog? Oh, right, a blog from your mobile phone. <laughs> Don't know the answer? Don't worry. Sit back, relax, it's time to get schooled. Hi, I'm Dave Morphus with Telabs here today with Stuart Bennington. The topic we'll talk about today is fixed mobile convergence, or FMC. And Stu, I think the first thing we need to do, everyone throws the term around, is, is kind of come out with a, a clinical definition of FMC. Sure. Um, fixed mobile convergence can really be done in a couple of different ways. The first major area of convergence we see is with the end user experience. So if I'm a consumer, and let's say I have a voice connection at home, I'm talking my, on my landline, I could be using my, my cell phone to talk to the landline through a broadband link, either through a Wi-Fi connection or a femto cell, which is like a very small cell site within the home. And then as I leave the premise and get into a mobile environment, I want to be able to keep that call connected and continue talking and not have to worry about changing over. Um, also holds true for data connections if I'm online, potentially even video connections down the road. So the first area is related really to the end user experience of uh, convergence. The second area is what we call network level fixed mobile convergence. And this is really something that relates to the operator who's offering both fixed services and mobility services. And what the intent is, is number one, to contain the costs of the network and so in other words take advantage of elements that can provide a variety of end user services reduce the cost reduce the operational expense because you're managing fewer elements and then you can make it more seamless but really the it makes a much more efficient network for providing a variety of end user services this can go hand in hand with the service level convergence but it's not necessarily the same thing so those are the two major forms of, of uh, fixed mobile convergence I think the next thing we need to talk about then are some of the benefits of FMC. So the benefits from a business standpoint really can be divided again between the service level convergence and the network level convergence. On the service level side, the operators are wrestling with replacement of this traditional voice revenue and they need to find new ways to do that. So fixed mobile convergence is number one, a way to potentially compete with other operators for voice services, potentially develop a new revenue stream if they can bill for ad advanced functionality that they didn't have before. And it also helps from a what we call stickiness standpoint, in other words, retaining customers in a world where there's a lot of churn between operators and, and consumers are getting more savvy about the choices they have. So this is a way to help retain the customers and, and reduce the acquisition costs of new customers. And you know, there's obviously financial benefits to doing that. And it's not just for voice, it can be for data again and potentially video. On the network side, as I mentioned before, there's capital cost savings you could potentially have by combining the functionality of multiple technologies into single elements, providing multiple end user services off that same infrastructure, and then there's the operational costs that go along with it. So in other words, you don't have a variety of different discrete technologies and discrete um, networks out there. You can combine it into one and have a single management system to, to accommodate that. Again, both of these go hand in hand. So if you can get a converged network infrastructure, it also paves the way to being able to offer the end user service convergence as well. Now that we have a definition for FMC, where is it in terms of acceptance, rollout, are there roadblocks? When are we gonna see it kind of really take off? So it is starting to happen today on both counts. On the service level side, clearly there's voice convergence that's happening. North America is pretty aggressive, but it is happening in other areas of the world. On the data side, it's starting to happen as well, where you can have a data connection either to a femto cell, let's say with a 3G operator, or you can be accessing, let's say, a nearby base station, and then as you move into a mobile environment, you can retain your data connection. So on the service level side, that's definitely happening. On the, on the network side, it's clearly happening, and it's happening in a widespread um, array of uh, environments around the world. Part of it is because the technology is there. So you hear about elements, on the, let's say on the transport side, like Rotoms, where you're combining the optical layer and the ethernet layer. You hear about elements on the, on the um, data side, multi-service edge devices that can accommodate both legacy technologies as well as ethernet and IP and, and mediate between those technologies. And then 
on the access side, both the radio access network and the consumer broadband network are both increasing in bandwidth, but they also are using similar technologies that can be combined at, at hubbing points. And so in that regard, there's clear benefits to operators and they're recognizing that as they provide this variety of services that the convergence on the network level makes a lot of sense. Finally, what then is Telabs doing with regard to FMC? Well, Telabs has compiled a portfolio that is really focused on combining technologies and providing a migration path for end users. So this includes a variety of different elements. There's the 7100 optical transport system, for example, that has the ability to combine the optical layer, a dynamic optical layer, with Ethernet switching integrated with some of the Sonnet SDH integrated legacy technologies into a single platform. On the data side, the 8800 multi-service edge platform enables operators to migrate from traditional frame relay and ATM services to Ethernet and IP and make it transparent for end users and end, end user services. And that has applicability both for fixed services as well as mobile services. And then finally, in the access network, there's the radio access network, which accommodates a lot of different technologies and let's say in a UMTS environment. And so the 8600, which is a multi-service edge router, can combine those technologies in the RAN, the radio access network. Whereas on the, on the consumer broadband side, the 1100 multi-service access platform can do the same thing for consumer connections on the, on the fixed side. So both of those, those access technologies can then be combined into uh, hubbing elements um, and gaining the operator the ability to consolidate functionality into, into, into a more seamless network, providing operational benefits from a management system, and again, just as crucially, providing a path to migrate from today's services and today's technologies to the newer technologies as they see fit and, and re continuing to reuse the investment that they put in place today. You done already? That wasn't too hard, was it? The correct answer is A customer retention. Now the next one might be a little bit harder, so I want you to study your acronyms. And hey, if you wanna write a mo blog about us at Get School, that is perfectly fine with me. Now, if you did miss the answer, don't get down. Remember, you can always download a cheat sheet at inspirethenewlife.com. Come back tomorrow for some more mo show.